Okay. Carrie, how are we going? <laughs> I'm here. Um, it's okay. May 11th. Yeah, it's May 11th, 2021. Um, I'm going to start off with a story, and after I tell the story, um, you can uh, you can you can um, um, comment on it or bring in your own. I got an email yesterday, and it said, um, and it said um, Biden has a uh, an agenda for the IRS to collect $1 trillion more per year. And the IRS said, well, we can't do it. We don't have enough people, and we don't have enough money. So he gave them $80 billion and said, there's more where that came from. And how many people do you need? <clears throat> Hire them. So we just think we got it bad. Um, what we're doing is really, really effective. And But... but uh, he is doing everything that he can to stop any kind of anything. The problem is he's the government doesn't get one dime as well. I got the, the uh, what is it called, the, the Grace Commission. The Grace Commission says one nickel, but not one nickel of the income tax that we pay goes to feed the government. So he's asking for another trillion dollars. So what he's going to do is he's going to take another trillion dollars out of the economy. So um, I just wanted to make that comment. I have that email, and uh, it goes into how he's, they're going to do it. Now, it's pretty interesting. Now, does anybody have any questions? So we, let's get your questions answered first and up front so that we can move on. That way uh, you, won't, you, won't, you won't miss your uh, question being asked. I have a question, or two actually. So, I don't care. You only get you only get one every other Tuesday. You only get one. So, no, <laughs> go ahead. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Go ahead. Ask I know you've been. I, I've heard you long enough to know you're you're kidding a lot. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so uh, about two calls ago, I, I asked a question, and you okay. said to do an amended petition. So I don't know if you want me to I tell did. you the background of that, if you recall. I did. I um, recall, I, and I remember. Oh, good, good. Don't make it. Short I'm just again. old. Um, I, I don't have Alzheimer's. Yet. <laughs> okay, it's good to know. <laughs> so, <laughs> go ahead. So I put that in to court, into the tax court, yep. and um, yep. very quickly, two days later, he he uh, killed it. And I could read the order he put in, if you want. Okay. It says this case was dismissed by order, entered March five, blah blah blah. There is nothing in the amended petition filed April 18th that prompts the court to take further action in this matter. That being so, okay. it is ordered that the court will not, and respondent need not take any action in response to the amended petition. Okay. Then, then what you need to do is just start over. Just go ahead and start over. Do the same thing again. This time, make it different. In other words, if you went back to 2000, go back to 98, if you went to 2017, go to 2020. That way, it, it's it's the same. Everything's the same, but the dates are different, so they can't say it's a duplicate. Because they'll come back and say it's a duplicate. And then if you said, I never received a statutory notice of deficiency, I never received a statutory notice of determination, do the opposite. I never received a statutory notice of de uh, deficiency and a statutory notice of determination. Do, do that the opposite. So flip it. But do Yes, and that way okay. they can't. That way they can't say it's a duplicate, um, because see, th we are so effective with this now. Um, uh, we have a we had a guy go in front of the IRS, uh, uh, United States District Court, to, because they wanted him to put up a hundred thousand dollar bond, or he had to go to prison mm. until they. The, so the IRS could get him in court. And, and they're not going to court probably until late December, probably next year, March or April. So they wanted him to sit in jail that long or put up a $100,000 bond. We are so effective with the judge says, you have nothing to say. I'm making the decisions. He puts up nothing. So he went home without putting up a bond. We still, we're, he's still going to go to court, but it's probably going to be a year or so until he goes. That's how effective this is. So it, it, it's not 
that you it's not that you didn't do it right it's that they don't know how okay. to deal with what we're doing so the best thing to do is is just go back and 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 um um you know in other words basically the same thing you did before the only difference is um uh reverse that and then right and then do and do and just do different years um if you went to 2000 to 2020 and you don't need 2000 go to 20 uh go to uh, uh 2003 to 2020 in other words just make the years I, different you know or I, did like, part, I, I went crazy with mine i I went crazy with mine. I went 1985 to 2020, I think. Okay. So maybe, maybe 19, I went a little too far. <laughs> you, yeah, that could be. Go 98 to 2020. See, I mean, and then go back and tell them that you, you never received a statutory notice of deficiency. And, and you can change it up under, under uh, or a statutory notice of determination under t Title 26, 6212, or 6213A. And what you want to try to do is, is just re-enter it pay the $60 and start it over again. That way you, you have another okay. chance of getting another bike. Um, you know, I, I wish I was in charge of it because, you know, you would have gotten it, but, but I'm not. You know, um, what we're trying to do is we're yeah. just trying to do the best we can. And I'll tell you what, they're, we're, we're putting the hurt on them. And then just to, just to let you know, um, uh, have, I had a, a lady I've been working with, and she went to the um, tax court. And uh, now she didn't go to the to the tax court. She did it through Skype, hmm. and and or okay. Zoom, whatever it was. And and yeah. it was video. It was it was you could see she could see them, and uh, and so anyways, they said she owed a hundred thousand dollars in taxes and sixty five thousand dollars in penalties and interest. And when hmm. she got there, she, she we 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 have a, a, a I put together a. A series of paperwork that 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 um, she used, and what we do is we st if we keep them on the path, they have a very hard time with this. Where the where the problem we're having, and I'm not saying this is you, is we allow them to get us off the path. Um, you know, they've got to be God because they said this, and I uh, the biggest problem that I have is um, we got somebody that's going to go to court, and and then. When they get there, the, well, the IRS will say, well, Your Honor, he can't use Title 27 in his argument. So then they call me and say, why did you tell me to use 27? They said I couldn't. Duh! You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like we, uh, we found the gun in his hand. We can't, we, you can't use the gun uh, as, your, as your defense. As your defense. See? So they don't want us to use 27 because they're using 27. So what we did is we agree with them. We agree with you. Why are they using Title 27? See? And so we just have to understand what they're saying is hurting them. That's why, that's why it, whatever they say, um, I, I double down on that. In other words, uh, unfortunately, if you just go back and try it again, um, it, it's, hmm. six, it's only sixty dollars, and I don't want to, and I don't want to play that down. If you don't have the sixty dollars, then do a a poppers form. Okay. And, and so is it, is when it, I did my oh sorry, go, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to ask: Is it normal to get the chief special trial judge assigned to a case? Yes. These type every of cases, time. it is every time. It, it, now the funny part of it is, the chief trial judge might be Billy Bob. We'll get three cases back in the same week, and they'll all be the special trial judge. One's Billy Bob, Mary Lou, and Sam. <laughs> what I'm saying is, mm. is it doesn't. It, it, in other words, I don't know if they're the chief judge or not. If you go online, go to the, go to the, go online, and you'll see the chief judge. But then go the next week, yeah. and, and 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 it's a different one. So, so to answer your oh, question, okay. I, I'm only assuming they do. I'm only assuming that they do because. Um, we're, we're hitting them pretty hard. We had a okay. we, we had a guy that sent his in, and it's been eight weeks. He hasn't heard anything. He called he called the um, the uh, he called the court, and then of course the lady that answers the phone. She's not an attorney. She's whatever she is. She's the secretary or the court reporter or whatever she is. Yeah, and he says, "Look, I sent yeah. I, I, right. I sent in my court order." Eight weeks ago, she said, "You don't understand." She said, "We're getting a hundred thousand of these a week." <laughs> so, so, 
yeah, oh yeah. See, uh, so they're frustrated. See, they're frustrated with it, and, and so uh, um, you know we're not the only ones doing it. We got people all over the country that are doing it also. You know, I talk to people. They, they got groups. You know, they got they got groups in California. They they've adopted this because it's working. I got people that are in New York. They're adopting it. They're doing it. There's a group in Florida that I know of that are doing it. So 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 they're all we're all going. What does that tell you? That tells you that it's COVID and everything else. They've done nothing. See, what we're trying to do is if we if we chain them to the floor, they're so buried, they'll leave you alone. Why? Because they don't have time to answer. So we have a guy. I have a guy that we that we uh, did, and the IRS is trying their best to get to get a hold on it. Um, but it's been four years, and they still haven't gotten their toll on it. Because as soon as they tried to get him to come to court, um, um, COVID hit, and then he couldn't show up. Then they couldn't get an attorney. Then the attorney couldn't get a couldn't get a staff. Then then and then the uh, the judge couldn't get in there. And then they didn't have a so they they couldn't get a Skype because the the, the, the cameras all of the all the or a Zoom or they were all used up. So uh, what's happening is not a bad thing. It's, we're, what we're doing is we're making them work for what they're doing. But when I got that email, that email that tells you that um, that Biden wants a trillion more dollars a year collected from the taxpayer, not one di- not one nickel of it goes to him. That tells me again, what are they saying? What are they saying between the lines? They're saying we are, and I don't mean us, but the people have become so effective that we're destroying their little playground. <clears throat> They're not collecting enough money that people are starting to see what's going on. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. So, okay. so, so all I can say is kudos to us. You know, we're, okay. we're, we're, we're doing it. But um, what you need to do is, is do it again and, and do it, like I said, and see what they say. Send it in and... and uh, <laughs> Send it in. So they'll kick it back and say we just. They won't kick it back and say we just look at your crap. Right. They, they're going to say they might say this is a duplicate. Then you can go back and do an amended petition. It's not a duplicate. This is not a duplicate. Because a duplicate. <laughs> see now. Okay. <clears throat> see, I, I'm just an asshole. That's all I can tell you. But but let me ask you a question. If I have a twin brother. What does an identical twin mean? What does identical mean? Tell me what I, what does identical mean? Well, it can mean anything. It depends on your definition. It could be from birth and that point on. You have different experiences. I mean, one could get a leg cut see? off. You know. <laughs> see? So when one leg cuts off, the other one falls off too. No. See, the problem is right. they're saying it's a duplicate. It ain't a duplicate. If it was a duplicate, it would have the same ink, the same paper. That's just the way I do stuff. And see, if we have to tie them, if we have to tie them down, we will. But when I sent my first one in, I didn't send. I sent. I didn't send the sixty dollars. But we have to now because because what they're doing is they won't hear it now, and that's okay. If you want to know, if you want to see what happened, used to happen is Joe Bannister. He's from from Nevada. Go online. Most people know him. Go online, and you can yep. go to the United States District Court. I'm sorry, United States Tax Court. Court docket inquiry, put in Joseph Bannister, Nevada, and it'll pop up. He has almost 70 inputs, and you'll see where he paid his fine or his fee. What the court mm-hmm. said was, okay, the court says you owe $250,000. Pay that before we'll, hear the, before we'll hear it. When I saw that, I thought, huh, that's wrong. So we didn't pay the $60, forced them to, to hear it. We did so many of them. They said, "Okay, we'll start hearing it, even the old money, because they're losing. They're losing out on all this money." See, I suspect what they're going to do is they're going to go up on the price. I suspect they'll go up to a hundred bucks. But if that's the case, then yeah. we'll, we'll start doing. We'll start doing the poppers more. It's just fine. But 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 the only thing you can do now is. Um, 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 just do another form, but don't send sixty dollars cash because I did the first time that I did it, and they took the cash and said it didn't pay. Pocket it. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> so I went ahead and I get. I, what I do is I get a, a uh, I get a uh, uh, so uh, 
a postal money order because the post office is part of the government, and blah, blah, blah. That's right. They don't cost that much. Yeah, and, and that way there's no, you know, I don't ever have any problems. When you send it, send it. Um, if you go to the post office, you can send it in and, and get a tracking number. You don't have to pay to certify it because what will happen is, what, here's what's happening. You'll send it in certified, and the post office will leave it with them. Yeah. They'll open it and see what it is, and then you won't get your green card back. So what happens on a tracking number, they check it. That has been delivered. Now now you can print, and now you have proof of it. They're, they're really, they're not playing. The game that they're playing is childish. It's very costly to us, but it's childish because instead of signing for the, the green cards, they'll leave them there. See, they won't, mm -hmm. they won't sign them. Okay, then we got we paid to have a green card delivered, and they won't sign it. So I'm using the tra just get a tracking number, and if you buy a fifty cent stamp where I'm at, they say here's the tracking number, and they put it on, and they give you a tracking number for um, almost nothing. So I just get a tracking number, and then what happens is um, I go online and put in the tracking number, and it says delivered. Then I just print that out. And I, I got proof that they do, it's been delivered. Say, yeah, I do sound like that as well. Okay, you can also see, track the just, money order, but it's very generic. Like I think it's yeah, it, cashed in or something. Yeah. Right. Right. So, but but you yeah. know what what we what we have to do is we have to stay we have to stay two or three steps ahead of them because they just don't know what, what what's going on. And uh, we have we have uh, several other things that we're doing right now that um, that they're, they're pulling their hair out. So what we're doing is once you get your court order. Um, we're going back That's what I want. to the tax. We're going back to the tax court, uh, telling the tax court we got a lien and um, they're violating the court order. We and we get the tax court to give us another ruling. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, you can't. I was told when I start before I started this, you can't go to the tax court. Don't go to the tax court. Whatever you do, never go to the tax court. I, thought, I was told huh. that too. Yeah. So I went to the tax. I went to the tax court. And I, everything started working. So I thought, I wonder who's spreading that rumor. <laughs> <laughs> See, so that, that's why I, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I, I'll move, I move easily. Um, in other words, if if I'm, if something's not working, I'm, re I'm, re I'm ready and willing to change the way I do business. See what mm. I'm saying? And yeah. so, you know, we got this the best we can. We're still, we're still doing it. Um, all you can do is just. Uh, do the same thing, but change some things up so they can't. So if they come back and they say it's a duplicate, see, then you can go back with an amended petition saying it's not a du or go back with the motion saying a duplicate. A duplicate would be the same thing. This ain't even close. See, and then <laughs> and then give them give them the DT, give them the definition of a du duplicate, and, and then go from there. See, in other words, um, we just got to try to stay one step ahead of them if we can. Okay. Okay. Good. Did that answer your question? Yeah, that, that's that's great. Um, I have the second question. I sure go ahead. Um, it's for a different case. Um, I finally heard back on this case. It was an it's an answer, and it's yeah. kind of what I was expecting. I can read uh, the meat of it, which is um, sure. It says one through six inclusive. Admits that respondent issued a notice of determination of respect to petitioner's taxable years 2010 and 2011. Denies petitioner did not receive the notice of determination for its taxable years 2010 2011. Denies for lack of sufficient information, the remaining allegations. And then um, it goes into some other stuff like it references my previous tax court case for those years. So I remember hearing on a previous recording saying that those aren't statutory, meaning they weren't signed under um, 6065. Okay. Right, you can't use that. You can't use that as an argument because they'll come back and they'll say, "I've got it somewhere. I've got to find it." They say, "Well, what that says is, is the taxpayer has to sign under penalty of perjury, but the IRS yeah. does not." Okay, but that's not what it says. We have a supreme. I have one somewhere. I have to find it. The Supreme Court said no. It says that, and that's what it means. But what you, the reason we say statutory because if you read sixty two twelve, it says in order for it to, you to get it. It has to be sent certified or registered. When they send them, they're not. They're, normally, they just come in the mail, or they'll come. They'll come, 
and and, you, and it'll have a sticker on it, but but you won't have to sign it. So it's it's improper. Um, the other problem that they're having is th- there's a lot of places that tell you that 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 you don't have to file. Now, where the problem comes, <clears throat> okay, I'm different in this way. People say I had a, I had lunch with a uh, with about uh, twenty guys today, and they're all uh, we're trying to get a process together to get two or three guys out of jail. And what they're all saying is, well, tell them that you're a, you're a, you're a non-resident alien. Now, mm. I want to ask you a question: Are you a non-resident alien, or are you a uh, American national, or are you something else? I don't know the definitions of those. Could you tell me? Okay. See, my answer. That's the, see, that's the answer. Because what happens when you say I'm a non-resident alien, you just made a claim. So that's you're right. saying I never received a notice of deficiency. Well, that's a claim. You're saying I never got a claim. Then you make a claim. Now there's, now there's a conflict. And see, what happens is just what you said. Well, I'm a non-resident alien. Well, what's a non-resident alien? Well, it's somebody who is, and then we're telling them what it is. Well, where'd you get that? Now you've got a two-month argument with them, and it comes up that, that they, well, that's not what it is. See, that's irrelevant. We're not talking about that. So now you're defending. See, I never defend. I'm always on offense. Does that make any sense to you? Right, right. Yes. See, now I'm just going to show you what I mean by that. Um, you're on this call today. You're the dumbest guy on the call. Now I want you to, now I want you to defend that. Uh, what proof do you have then? See what how proof simple do you have that the dumbest can't call? Yep. See how simple that is? Flip it around them. Okay, there it is. Now you're always move. on them. That's right. See, what happens is if I'm the dumbest, huh, how do you know everybody? Do you know everybody on the call? See, what proof do you have that I'm the dumbest? See, because they made the comment, I'm going to make them, I'm going to make them, I'm going to make them defend it. And that's what we have to do. And that's how I do it. That's why I say a statutory. Because... Because, see, the one thing that, um, uh, uh, let's not argue the Constitution. Not that it doesn't matter, but when you argue the Constitution, the reason it doesn't work is we're not in a constitutional court. We're in a statutory court. Okay? Mm. If we're in a statutory court, whether you call it maritime, uh, whatever you call it, I don't care. It's still a statutory court. The nice thing about the statutes is they have to give you a remedy. There has to be a back door. See, so what's the back door? They have to prove what they say. So they're saying you didn't file, you didn't file a, uh, a 1040. Well, of course not. Well, of course not. Your own Privacy Act, Paper Reduction Act notice says I can't file one. It does? Then you read it to them. Well, uh, see, it says you have to file a return or statement. Well, the 1040 is a return, but so is a 1041. So is a CT1. So is a so is an OID. So is a so is a 943. 940. It doesn't tell me which one. I'm confused. Um, which one do I file? We well, got to file a 1040. Show me it. And what's so funny? What we're using now is people that are going in front of the court. What they're saying is you didn't file a 1040. So we're getting it for willful failure to file. That's 7203. 7203 is Title 27. Since I didn't file a 1040 and they're getting me for 7203, tell me what ten, tell me what a 1040 is. Are you asking me? Yeah. It's a, In other words, I don't know. I did, it's a okay. form. <laughs> well, no, no. It's, it, they're saying on the paperwork, will for fair to file. That's 7203. Okay, 7203, under the Parallel Table of Authorities, is Title 27. On their right. paperwork, they're, they're, okay, they're saying, I didn't file a 1040. So tell me what a 1040 is. Well, I can tell you it's not for a BATF, which is Title 27. Nope, that is what it is. It has to be, because the 7203 is Title 27, and they're after me because yeah. I didn't fill out a t- Oh. So now... Is that truly the form for what they're saying? There you go. So I say, okay, the reason I didn't file a 1040, because you said 7203. 7203 is Title 27. So the only way I can see this is Title 1040 
the 1040 uh, return has to be a Title 27. It has to be. Yeah. Ain't no way it cannot be. Okay. I don't do alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Yeah. I'm always, I'm always one step ahead of them. To me, this makes sense. See, if 7203 is willful fair to file, they say I didn't file a 1040. Well, of course not. Now I've got another argument. What's the argument? Well, I don't do alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. And 1040 is a Title 27 form. No, it's not. It has to be. Now they're on defense. <laughs> you said seven. You said seventy two oh four, or seventy two oh two, seventy three or whatever it is. And it says right here on the parallel table that's Title Twenty Seven. If I didn't file a ten forty, and you're coming after me for seventy two oh three, that's Title Twenty Seven. Title Twenty. The ten forty is the Title Twenty Seven form. And then I shut up and watch the fun begin. Now there. <laughs> well, that's not, I, 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 see. That's what it says. See, see, mm. I just, I take what they say, and I use it against them. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. See, what I try to do, oh, what I try to do, what I try to do is, is confuse, confuse them at all times. So what do we do for this answer? answer. Uh, do you have the key? Okay. Okay. They're saying they, they Say sent me a notice of termination, but it's not to me. Right. It's not a valid notice of termination. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to you what what you say. It doesn't matter what you do. Is you tell them since you sent it to me, show me what you sent. How okay. hard is it? How hard is it to send you what you already sent? So probably just uh -huh. send me a copy of what they sent me. Okay, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. It's not statutory, is it? Right. Okay, so then so they lied. Now you can go back and say, well, they they told the judge, they told the court that we they sent me a statutory and they didn't. So that's perjury. Perjury brings twenty five to life. Now I'm talking 25 to life. That's how I do everything, see? I'm always on offense. So if they said they sent you one, you said you never received it, then let them show it to you. Because what are the odds of you getting a notice of deficiency or a notice of determination that's statutory? What are the odds of that? What are the, what are the chances of it? So signed under penalty perjury, zero. Okay, I want those odds. I'll put yes. my money on that horse. I'll put my money on that horse every day. So it's just mid matter making them put their head on the chopping block so I could cut it off. There you go. There you go. Then if you have to defend it and you have to go to the court, we can take. See, we can. I hear this all the time. The judges are corrupt. Yes, they are. But we're letting mm -hmm. them be corrupt because we're letting them be corrupt because we're saying <clears throat> we're saying stuff like um, I'm a I'm a non-resident alien. So when I hear that, you know, what I, you know, what I tell the person, if I was born on Mars, would I be an alien? What's the answer? If I was born on Mars, would I be an alien? Uh, it depends on your definition of alien, but um, commonly speaking. People would say yes. Okay, so I'm an alien if I'm born on Mars. Wouldn't I be non-resident to alien to the Earth? So a non-resident alien is somebody born on Mars. Now, you're, well, that's a, now that's a relative okay, term. See, that's exactly my point. So rather than that, I say, huh, what proof do you have that I am a whatever? See? Okay. Are you a taxpayer by the, any chance? I don't know. <laughs> it depends on what definition well, taxpayers. Okay. Um, I paid tax again. on a jug of a jug of gasoline yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. In regards okay. to gas, yes. Oh well, see, I didn't say what it was. 
The question right. is, are you a taxpayer? My answer is, well, of course I'm a taxpayer. There you go. Uh -huh. Of course I'm a taxpayer. See? What, did you fill it out at 1040? You didn't ask me that. See, the problem we get into is when they ask you a question. For an example, are you a taxpayer? Well, I don't file a 1040 but, and I, because I don't have to because I'm a non-resident alien because I don't live in Washington, yeah. D.C. And I see, they, so they just sit there. They, even they, they, keep, <laughs> that, they just keep giving you, letting you pull the bait in. See? Yeah. They'll ask me, are you a taxpayer? Well, yeah. Sometimes. Well, how are you? <laughs> no, I'm a taxpayer. I'm a taxpayer all no. the time. See? What do you mean? Well, when I buy gas, I, I pay tax. If I buy beer, I pay tax. Yeah. I don't worry about it. See? Well, uh, <laughs> what we meant was, what we meant was, but you should have said that. See, I'm not going, I only answer the question that's asked. Now, let me ask you a question. Do your feet hurt? Hurt who? See how simple that becomes? <laughs> see, see, see how simple this becomes? You so did, say, no, do but your my, feet hurt? Yeah, okay, do your feet hurt? My no, feet? But my back, no, but my back does. Well, I didn't ask you if your back hurt. Do your feet hurt? No. Uh, well, what I hurts? I don't know. What's, what do you mean? See, now I take control. See, the problem we're having is we'll ask, are you married? Well, I'm on my third wife. My other two wives, they left me. Uh, my fourth child, they didn't ask you that. The question is, are you married? No. What happened? What happened to what? What happened to your wife? Oh, she left me. Which one? Which one what? See, in other words, they're going to they're gonna ask me a question, and I'm going to answer the question they ask. Not the question I think they ask. Doesn't that make sense? Doesn't married also mean like if you stick two pieces of wood together, glue them together, and See? married? There you go. See? See? That's why you have to understand. That's why I'm on my third marriage. Through the yeah. first three uh, sticks broke. See? <laughs> See? I've had six jobs in my life, so I've been married to the job six times. See? What I'm saying is yeah. it... Yeah. it it, it becomes farther and farther and farther away. See? Now, let me ask you a question. Do you have an alarm on your house? An alarm on my house? Yeah. On it or in it? See? There you go. That, wasn't that simple? Because if you said yes, I said, where is it, outside or inside? Well, uh, let yeah. me see. Now you're trying. Now you're try so you back. I got you off of the path. Once you're off of the path, I keep you in the rough. See? <laughs> um, I'm going to use an analogy here. Do you play golf? Oh, I've, I've heard this one before. I usually say it to women. Because it's gentlemen you? only. So. <laughs> no. Golf, golf is a game. Is no, golf is a game to play. You throw the ball up in there and you shoot it with a shotgun. That's golf. Oh, I think it's called, you said, gentlemen only, ah. ladies forbidden. I tried to, I didn't ask you if, I didn't ask you if ladies, I didn't ask you if ladies played. I asked you to play golf. <laughs> See? Yeah, I play yeah. golf. Oh, so you throw the ball in the air, what kind of shot did you shoot? What? See? You didn't qualify. What do you mean by golf? Everything. See? They're asking, they're asking you what I call the red herring. They're going to ask you something previous to it. See, they're going to ask you something that has right. nothing to do with it so that your mind is thinking of something else. Then, yeah. when, they the the, then when they look, there you go. So the question is, I don't know, do I play golf? I don't even know what it is. Well, it's a game. Oh, I play games. Sure. I must play yeah. golf. <laughs> um, see, it's, it's five-card stud. What's that? Well, that's golf. You just said it was a game. See, now, see, I've always got them on they, they're always on the, the, the defense, and that's where you can't win, see? You can't win when you're on defense. If you're playing football, by the way, did you watch the Super Bowl by any chance? Uh, no. Okay, do you know what the Super Bowl is? It could be anything. It could be a toilet, a giant toilet. Huh. <laughs> Ain't that something? See? In other words, 
See, I was hoping you'd say yes. Then I'd say, okay, what do they call soccer? Well, I thought you meant, see, I don't care what you thought I meant. That's right. <laughs> so you have to see, unless you qualify it, and, and that's what it says. And I know I've, we've done this before, but if, are you in front of a computer by any chance? Yes, I am. Okay, I want you to look something up for me. When you do, come back, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to let you read it so you can see it. We've, we've done this before. I want you to look up Title I, Section 1. When you get it, come back on so we can go over right. it. Somebody else might have a question. I want you to look up Title I, Section 1, and then I'm going to show you what they're doing to us and why why we can't get our arms around it. Does anybody, does anybody else have a question? Hey, Carrie. I'll be soon. Carrie, can you hear me? No, I can't. Okay, the, uh, <laughs> right, right after this call... <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right after this call, Carrie, I'll be sending over my uh, subject line called consent decree, and I'll be sending over the amended, the amended consent decree to the judge's sua sponte 12b6 dismissal. I'll just let you All know right. that'll be in, that'll be in your inbox and and uh, I for you to look that. at. Okay, I will look at it. No problem. Put your phone number on there, just so and so, and if you want, if you want me to call you back on it, but. Because I don't remember everybody's number and all that. I appreciate that. No, no, the phone, the phone number will be phone number will be in the body. That's perfect. That'll okay. be fine. I just that way I can because you know I, I I I try to call everybody back, but I don't have all their numbers yet memorized. Okay. Does anybody else? And thank you for that. Does anybody else have a uh, a question? Okay. Um, do we have any? Yeah, I got a um, all right, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I was um, back on the uh, house taxes there. Um, we got, like, April 1st or something, um, and they sent out stuff. They didn't even say how much we owed in the um, in the paperwork. Just that the, the taxes were going up by about 10%. I was just curious. Um, if y'all had that happen, and also if it's too late to, to fight that, because um, okay, you know, I'm going to tell you, I'll I'll address that for you. I will do it. I will share how I'm doing it, but I'm going to make you work for it. Are you in front of a computer? No. Can you be? Uh, in a few minutes, yeah. That's okay. I want you to do me a favor, and then I'm going to show you how to address it. If you will, I want you to go to Title 31, Section 3124, and I'm going to show you how to address it. And then, and then you can tell me how, if it's too late. Um, it's never too late to do the right thing, but sometimes it's too late to challenge this stuff because of the way they've set it up, and I'll explain it to you. But I want you to look up Title 31, Section 3124. What, we're, what I'm do, what I always do, is I use the titles. We have a title. We're in a we're in a uh, a title. What is um, a a, um, stat, a statute uh, driven government? We're in a statute court. So why don't we use statutes to help us defend them, def defend ourselves against them, instead of trying to to um, try to figure out or snake our way through because. Um, if you go to the Hague, that's the world court, and you get a judgment for $100 million on the government. Um, now, when you do that, uh, where the, the Hague sheriff will, t will, will, will take that judgment and help you collect it. Where's the Hague sheriff? Hello? I couldn't tell you. See? That, they're... Okay, there's a lot of noise. If who's ever making that noise, would you please mute? Um, what I'm trying to tell you, see, so if you go, we don't have constitutional judges and sheriffs. We have statutory. So if you get a constitutional um, um, judgment and you take it to a statutory sheriff, he is not going to go and, and protect you. So you have to get a statute. Okay, Ed, Ed, if you would... Um, hit, uh, sh stop, uh, shut everybody off, and I'll come back on because it's very, it's very loud. Just, just uh, mute everybody, Ed, and I'll come back on. So 
Sorry, Ed. Mute everybody. I can't do it. Okay, thank you, Ed. That's much better. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is if we have a statutory maritime, whatever you call it, then we need to get a maritime or a statutory judgment so the, so the sheriff will help protect you. Now, that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to show you how to get those so we can keep these judges. See, we, we, we want to run to get a, to get a constitutional um, uh, judgment. Well, there's no constitutional. You can't get it. You can't get it. Um, um, uh, enforced because there's no there's no mechanism for that. There will be again someday, and maybe pretty soon. Now the guy that was going to go to Title One, Section One. Did you find it? If you did, hit star or uh, whatever it is, six. Unmute and come back. On. I, I have it. I'm All here. right. Now I want you to do me a favor. Okay, is that you making that noise? No, it's not me. I was muted when it was happening. All right. Okay, I want you to. Okay, it, there, there. It's really noisy. Do you hear that in the background? Something's it's like someone crushing paper. Yeah. Right. Are you still with me? Because it went away. Can you hear? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Thank you for doing okay. that. Okay, I want you to read just the first line, and then you tell me what it says. Read just the first line of Title One, Section One. So the one about Congress. So in determining the meaning of any act of Congress, unless the context indicates otherwise. No, stop right there. Now, who writes, who wrote Title 26? Congress. Okay. Who wrote Title 40? Congress. Okay. Who wrote Title 18? Congress. So you see a pattern there. Congress wrote all the titles. Now, I've heard this argument. Well, Title 26 has not been enacted in the positive law. Now, did it say any act of Congress that's been enacted in the positive law? Does it say that there? Nope. Any act of Congress okay. is what it's talking about. Okay, see, so, okay, we'll go in there and say, well, it's never been enacted in the positive law. That's an argument that is 100% non doable. Okay? Also, does it. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. All right. So any act of Congress, there's no stipulations there unless we tell you otherwise. Now, let's read the second line, if you will. All right. Words importing the singular include and apply to civil persons, parties, or things. Now, what does singular mean? And this, it could mean, it means plural. Includes okay. plural. Okay, wait a minute. Any act Several. of Congress, any act of Congress, what does singular mean? Several persons, ah. parties, or things. Okay, see? So any act of Congress, unless they tell you otherwise, singular means more than one. Now, let's read the next line. Words importing plural include the singular. Okay. Any act of Congress, when they say plural, what do they mean? Singular. They use the See, word include, have, which means only that. So That's all it means. Plural. That's, exactly, that's exactly, Well, plural, in, that's right, includes singular. So what, we're try, what they're trying to tell you is... Um, See, what I'm trying to tell you is if you know this going in, we can stop the judges from being so corrupt. What happens is we go in and we say, well, by God, I don't have to file a 1040. And the reason I don't have to file one because I'm a singular man. Okay, no problem. Against you. Then we're going to go home and say, that, that SOB, he's a liar, he's a no good, he's a skunk. Well, he is. But... We had it. We had it. Our neck. We put it on the chopping block and gave him the act. Now read the next one. Now, it gets worse. It just keeps getting worse. Read the next yeah. one. The next line. Just the line. But words importing the masculine gender include the feminine as well. So when when you go in there and 
I don't use affidavits. The reason I refuse to use an affidavit, I have to make a. I would have to make a, um, a, no, a. Well, a claim. I have to make a claim. I okay. carry a living, breathing man. Tell me what I just said. Um, you basically said you're a woman. Okay. Now my whole affidavit is shot. Sh I shot myself in the foot. I carry a living, breathing woman. I just shot myself in the foot. See, yeah. in other words, you can't make, okay, that's why I'm telling you. When I ask you a question, are you married? I don't know. Help me out here. I'm, not, I'm kind of a dumb guy. I'm an idiot. I don't understand what, you're, what you mean by being married. Could you please help me out? I don't understand that. Well, do you have a wife? Well, do, I, I have a wife, but would it be a man or a woman? I'm going to make them tell me. It, that's not what they ask, but I'm just trying to make you understand. See, in other mm -hmm. words, if you don't know this, not only are we given the, are, not only are we allowing the judge to be corrupt, we're giving him the axe and putting our neck. We're putting our neck on the on the stump. See, and we're saying, well, them judges are no good. They're not, but we're letting them be no good. Now let's read the next line. Words used in the present tense include the future, as well as the present. See the problem? In other words, did you ever file a 1040? Yeah, I did. Well, then you've got to do it in the future. You don't have a choice. There's no options. Well, um, now there's an option. So, oh, that, wait a minute. See? So you're going to go in there and you're going to argue, well, Your Honor, it doesn't pertain to me. I found out that I'm not one of the ones that are liable to file because, because I'm not a um, uh, whatever. See? What you're doing is you're giving, here's the ax, here's the thing, go ahead and chop my head off. <laughs> See? See, that's what we're doing. Now, let's read the next one. The words insane and insane person shall include every idiot, insane person, and person non compos mentis. Okay, what the judge will say to you, I'm going to ask you one more time, and if you don't answer it, I'm going to take you and make you have a mental evaluation. They say that to me almost every time I go to the court. You're going to go in for a mental evaluation. That's where they're getting it. What do you mean? Any act of Congress, all the judge has to do is say, um, are you an idiot? I don't know what you mean. You're going to go in for a mental evaluation. He's using Title I, Section 1. He's using that on you. But if we know that going in, guess what? I can have a defense against that. When the judge says to me, he says, well, I'm going to have to send you in for a mental evaluation. I said, oh, would you? My question is, will the psychiatrist speak to me for one hour, know more about me than my mother did when I lived with her for the first 25 years of my life? Will my mother know me better or the psychiatrist? Do you understand what I just did? He can't. Well, the psychiatrist will. Oh, really? So my mother was an idiot? My mother? My mother was stupid? Now I've got something that I can get traction on. I'm not going to see him because there's nobody as smart as my mom for 25 years. Once he says, well, no, your mother would know you better. Well, my mother said I'm different. I'm not stupid. I just cut his, I, here, here's the axe. Lay your head on the chopping block. I'm going to chop it off now. I have taken the teeth out of the judge because instead of standing there saying, well, I don't have to follow 1040 because I'm a non-resident alien. See, well, if you say that again, I'm going to go ahead and make you go in for a mental evaluation. Oh, okay, I won't say that no more. See, <laughs> the argument we're doing, see, we're throwing ourselves under the bus. Now, let's read the next one, if you would. The words person and whoever include corporations, companies, associations, firms, partnerships, societies, and joint stock companies, as well as individual, individuals. Okay, I have a friend of mine, whoever. He needs you to help him. Would you help my friend whoever? First of all, do you know whoever? Who is whoever? Uh, well, it's a friend of mine. You know whoever. Do I know a friend of yours? I, what friend is this? Whoever. Whoever. Do you know whoever? <laughs> Does this friend talk? Yes. <laughs> do you know whoever? How? I will not ask you again. I'll just put you in prison for 90 days until you, until, and then bring you back. See, they're going to make you answer it. Do you know mm -hmm. whoever? Do you know whoever? Probably not, but I need to know whoever okay. is. Okay, now, since you don't know who whoever is, I'm going to ask you a question. Tell me who General Motors is. 
Under this, it would be whoever. But I don't know General oh, Motors. Oh, yeah. well, really? You just said you didn't know him. You had no idea who it was. So you lied. Yeah, that's if I'm I knew him. Put, you, yeah, that's if I knew him. Well, <laughs> and you said no. Who is General Motor? They're a, gen, or they're a corporation. So you do know whoever. See, mm-hmm. the question would, the answer should have been, I don't know. Um, I, I'm confused. Are you talking about the individual? Then you just read those off. See, now you've protected yourself. This is their glossary page. Now let's read the next one. It just, it just, see, see, we're trying to think that the government wouldn't do what they said. They, they would do what we're saying. Now let's read the next one. Uh, officer includes any person authorized by law to perform the duties of the office. Now, what's the first name of every police you have ever met? The, his first name, what is it? Uh, we usually call them officer. So every single uh, policeman in a car driving down the road has the first first name, officer. Now you got a problem, mm-hmm. see? But if you know that going into this, we have a defense around that. So we can protect you when you get to the court because there's a defense for that. Doesn't that make sense? If you can see it coming, you won't get bit by it. Now let's read the next one. Signature or subscription includes a mark when the person making the same intended it as such. Let's talk about okay. intent. If, say that again? It's talking about intent. It says intended it as such. Okay, so if the judge puts the dot on a piece of paper, what is that? If he intended it to be a signature subscription, then it is. All right. See? Now, here's what we say. Well, I don't, I'm not going to honor that because it's, I want an original blue ink signature. See, how, see, I've heard that argument before. I want a, an original blue ink signature. Now, let's read the next one. The next one doesn't, it, just read the next one because that one doesn't make any difference there. Go ahead, read the next one. Line. Yeah, I know it's the one you're talking about at the end. Okay, uh, oath mm-hmm. includes affirmation, and sworn includes affirmed. That's fine. That's when you swear when they swear you in. Now read the next one, and this is the one that this is the, this one, the one the most devastate most devastating of everything that you've read. Go ahead and read it. Writing includes printing and typewriting and reproduction of visual symbols by photographing, multigraphing. Mimeographing, manifolding, or otherwise. It's a catch all there at the end. Okay. Okay. Now, the dot on a piece of paper, is it not a mark? So, a mark can be reproduced. If you reproduce the mark of the judge 25 times, you get the 25th generation of the mark. Tell me what you just Mm -hmm. got. What did you just get? A writing. No, sir, you got an original. You got an original blue ink signature. Yeah. That'd be the right. That's what it says. Does it <laughs> doesn't yeah. make any difference. See? See? <laughs> we're arguing. See? See, we're in an argument we can't win. Why? Because we don't know the rules. See what I'm saying? If, yeah, they're playing a game with know, some very different rules. And when we step into okay. that playing field, we have okay, to do so those if we rules. Know the, okay, what I'm trying to teach is I'm trying to teach you the rules so that when you go to court, See, when you get a speeding ticket, jurisdiction matters everywhere. There's no other thing that matters. Now, was, it, was that the last one of Title I, Section yes. 1? Okay. So what we have is, we have is, there's proof, every, not every time, but when, whenever I get encounter with the court, there's proof on every court case that I'm involved with that they're using Title I, Section 1. One of them is, if you don't answer the question, properly, correctly, in the way I want you to, I'm going to have you sent in for a mental evaluation. Well, I am answering it exactly the way you're asking it. If you ask me a question, do I have to answer the questions not asked? Now, I'm going to ask you a question. What color is a blue shirt? To whom? See how simple that is? Because if you say blue, then I'm going to bring in 10 blind guys and, and put them on the stand. and They're going to say, I don't know, I've never seen blue. So you lied. Now you have, well, what I thought you meant, I will not stand in that defensive position. I'm going to say, well, to whom? Well, to Mary. I have no idea. Ask Mary. She can tell you what color a blue shirt is. I can only tell you what a blue shirt is to me. I'm the only one that I can do this for. Why? Because that's the only person I can see through their eyes. 
See, what mm-hmm. I've done now is I've severed, I've severed all of that other nonsense off of the argument. Now, with Biden, with Biden saying that he's given the IRS eighty billion dollars, so he can, they can collect a trillion extra dollars. This is going to come into more and more play. What they're going to do is they're going to their computers are going to be working double time, triple time, quadruple time to send out letters more and more and more. We're going to get them. When we get them, we have to understand what they're asking so that we can answer the questions, answer the letters, truthfully, honestly, and the way they're asked. Doesn't that make sense? Now, yes. Is Biden trying to squeeze blood from a turnip here? I mean, there are laws. It, doesn't, it, the- it, it, makes, no diff- it makes no difference what he's doing because you've got to understand something. Biden, uh, let, let's go back to, to what I mean. Okay, what were you going to say? Squeeze blood from a turnip. I want you to finish your sentence so I can show you what you're trying to say, and what you're trying to say is, is, is an ill will. You can't argue that argument. Go ahead and finish your argument or your statement. Well, well that was it. It's like only people owe a certain amount of tax, so is it going to tweak the tax code to squeeze more out of people or Okay, the tax code won't change. It doesn't matter. Let's say it changes. It's irrelevant. Why doesn't it matter what the tax code says? Because Jur- the tax code, there you go. See, that's not going to change. I want you to do me a favor, if you will. I want you to look up Title 26, Section 6012. When you get it, come back, and we're going to read it, and I'm going to show you what it says. Then there's our protection. This is going to protect you. While you're looking that yes, up, I have it. there's somebody, okay, read it. Just the heading. I don't want you to read this. I just want you to read the heading. Persons required to make returns of income. Okay, now the question is, who's liable to do returns of income? It makes no difference if, he, if, if, if they write you a letter saying you, you didn't do your return. Are you that person that's required to make a return of income? You should read 6012A. And it'll tell you if you are. Then it's and then go to the the uh, Code of Federal Regulations for 6012, and it's black and white. It tells you verbatim by name. It gives you the profession that has to pay. It gives you the profession what percentages they have to pay. So what he's doing it doesn't affect me any. It has no effect on me whatsoever because my um, person hasn't changed. The status, okay. the person that has to file the income hasn't changed. Does that make sense? Yes, and, and they probably can't change that because I, I would imagine this is written around the Constitution not as, to not violate it. <laughs> See what I mean? So Biden's going to say, well, what we're going to do is we're going to make people over 60 pay 10 times more um, um Taxes doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Let's go to sixty. Let's go to sixty twelve, and let's see if person if I'm that person. I'm over sixty, so let's see if I'm that person liable to file to uh, an income. Let's see if I'm one of them guys. Because in there, mm-hmm. he said everybody over sixty. But if it says this, I didn't say it said this. It says only the speaker of the house over sixty. It hasn't changed anything. I'm not the speaker of the house. Or whatever it says, doesn't that make? So we have to understand. They're making these statements. Now I want to ask you a question: What's faster, a Ferrari from zero to sixty, or a nineteen sixty six Volkswagen Beetle zero to sixty? Which one's faster? <laughs> which one gets to the fastest from zero to sixty? Which one gets to zero to sixty the quickest? Which one? Do they both have all their parts and are operational, fully no. operational? No. So is one missing an engine me. or something? See, 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 now you screwed <laughs> me. See, see what you did? You qualified it. Because if you just said the Ferrari, I said, well, the Ferrari, I didn't tell you, it threw a rod and it's in the shop and it hadn't got an engine in it. Well, then the Volkswagen would. See, in other words, the Ferrari will never outbeat the Beetle until the engine's put in it. Well, we're going to say any Ferrari has to pay uh, an extra tax because they're so fast. Mine ain't, mine ain't got an engine in it. 
So it doesn't it doesn't change the the status of my car at all. Now, once I get the engine in it, now now it does. See, see, do you, does that make sense? So yes. I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you this. If it were me, because I've already done it. Sixty twelve and the regulation. You should read it. Now, that's my opinion. Now, Title Twenty Six, the where they're getting us is Title 26 is eight and a half inches thick. It's 10,000 pages. In Title 26, they also have Title 27. Did you know Mm -hmm. that? Yes. Okay. So when they say Title 26, Section 7203, willful failure to file an income tax, Title 26, 7203, what are they talking about? Title 27. Back See the problem they have? Back fire. There you go. Yes. See the problem? So what we're going to do is we're going to spend $80 billion more dollars to collect more taxes. So they're going to send you a letter saying, well, you, you, we're going to get you for willful failure to file. I don't care. Get me for willful failure to file. Because willful failure to file is 7203. That's Title 27. It has no effect on me. None. Why? I didn't sell alcohol to back and firearms last year. I didn't sell it this year, and I'm not going to sell it next year. So uh, let's do this. Let's quadruple. Let's go from 20% to 99% tax, taxes. Doesn't affect me. Why doesn't it affect me? My status has not changed, nor has Title 26 changed. See, if we understand that, we have a chance for an argument. When you go to the court and you say, well, by God, I don't have to file because um, I'm not a, um, um, a roofer. Well, go to Title 6012, and it will tell you who is liable for filing an income tax. If it says roofers have to, you have to. You have no choice. That's what it says. But let me just tell you, if you're a roofer, it's not in there. (laughs) See, 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 it's really simple if we understand what they're doing. What they try to do is they try to make it so vast and so big and so large. Now, I want you to think about this. I was born in Michigan. There's a, there's a snowball going down the hill. It weighs 17 tons, and it's going 82 miles an hour. How do you stop it? Um, get out of the way until it stops on its own. All right. So, so if your car's in the way and your house is there, no, there's a better way than that. Go to the top of the hill before it starts when it's the size of a golf ball. Pick it up and throw it, throw it the other way. That's what I'm trying to do here. In other words, once they get you and you're running down the hill at 82 miles an hour and it's got 17 tons of snow on you, it's a bugger bear to stop. That's what they're hoping yes. they do. That's why they trip you up. Just start at the top of the hill. When they put the snowball on, pick it up, melt it, crunch it up, bust it up, slam it, step on it. See, now it doesn't start. We can stop a lot of this, what's happening, if we understand the argument. Does that make sense? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Now, after you read Title I, Section 1, I'm going to make a statement and tell me if it's true. Up is down and down is up. Would that be a true statement? In this case, yes. It was exactly what I was thinking when you read, like, the beginning ones or when I read the beginning. Okay. Well, I want you to, okay, are you in the house or are you outside? Are you in a car? Where are you at right now? I'm not asking for you. I'm in the house. I'm just asking. All right. Look That's at your ceiling. House, yeah. look, look at your ceiling and tell me what color it's painted. Come on, guy. It, 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 it doesn't get, <laughs> it it doesn't get, get any easier. What color is it? It appears to be painted white, in my opinion. All right. Up is down, and down is up. So you're, so why would you put white floors in your house? That makes no sense to me. Actually, the floor is white, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, in your case, I can't see It's not painted. So. It's not painted. <laughs> see? Do, do you see? How, it's difficult, isn't it? See? That's what we're faced against. <laughs> see? Up is down, and down is up. See? 
Mm-hmm. So what's right. so what's on the opposite the, day. the room? <laughs> okay, the room that you're in. What kind of floor is it? What's uh, it the floor to be tile. Really? If you're so you got tile on about your floor. You got, not the ceiling. Oh, no. I, <laughs> see? Do you see how? Oh, okay. I just told you up is down and down. So you got tile on your ceiling. That Again, that makes no sense to me. Why would you have tile on your ceiling? Now you're on defense. Well, no, I but, thought you I mean, meant. Don't, I don't care what you thought. I asked the question. You answered it. You're now stuck with it. You change your mind, and I'll put you in jail for, for perjury. So why did you put tile on your ceiling? You don't have a choice. You have to do Well, because uh, we thought it would look nice. See, now you're stuck because you had no idea what they were saying. Yeah, if I was in a commercial building, there would be tile on the ceiling possibly, but yeah, yeah that's the case now. <laughs> but see, but you see, what I'm trying to say to you is that's why I, def- I declare everything. I want the jurisdictional statement on every single thing. What color is your ceiling? Where? In your house? All right, are we talking? Are we talking uh, Title One, Section One? Well, you know they are. Well, my my ceiling has brown tile on it because I walk on it. Well, that's your floor. Yes, it is. See, I, I can talk their language. They get they get frustrated with me. Why do they get frustrated with me? Because I, because I know what they're saying. See, you're not supposed to know what they're so, saying, and they're used to. That's uh, right. That's right. And see, what you don't want to go to court, you want to do it in letters. That way you can catch them when you can catch them. Now, let me show you how this works. How do you... Now, if somebody else has a question, please come, uh, please come in. I, I, you know, don't, don't, don't make me rattle on here, but, but if you have a question, please come in and ask it, and, and we'll, 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 we'll address your question. How do you give a court jurisdiction? You can't give something you don't have. Okay. Then why do we always say, well, um, um, uh, I don't want to give, I'm afraid to answer the question because the court will get jurisdiction. You're right. You can't give a court jurisdiction no matter what, even if you want to. You can sign it. You can swear to it. You can, you can, you can raise your hand, put it on the Bible, and say, I give this court jurisdiction. You can't. It's impossible. There's no way you can give it to them. Now, what court has jurisdiction on you and, and a tax issue. What court has jurisdiction on you and a tax issue? <laughs> uh, what kind of tax? Uh, income tax. State or federal? State. I don't know. <laughs> well, if you don't know, you're screwed, aren't you? Okay? I'm going to say the uh, traffic court has so if you go the traffic court, see, see the problem? You said you didn't know. So I'm going to take it to traffic court. I'm going to accuse you of all this stuff. The judge is going to rule in my favor 100% of the time. You just let the corrupt judge be corrupt. Why? Because you have no clue. So what court has jurisdiction? None. Because there's two jurisdictions. In rim, which is yeah. subject matter. They could have subject matter. That's possible. And in personam, that's personal jurisdiction. There's not a court in the land because statute, statutory courts can't get jurisdiction. The reason for it is the Constitution tells me I have an inalienable right. Another way to say it is unleanable rights. What is the court trying to do to me? Lean your rights. They can't. That's a felony. Now I got them. So when I go to court, that's my ace in the hole. That's my trump card. No, no pun intended. That's my uh, four aces. Because when they're in there and they say to me, "You have, we have jurisdiction." Wonderful. Can I see it? No. Okay. So then this is a federal tax court. Uh, uh, federal tax. Um, court no oh well this is a federal tax issue see well this is a traffic uh code court why because i got a traffic ticket see in other words if, if this court has jurisdiction and i get a traffic ticket they have to have what do they have to have they have to be a traffic code court so the question is if you get a dwi and you go to the court they're going to take you to traffic court 
is this a is this an alcohol code court? Well, no. Then you don't have jurisdiction. I don't care what I did. I don't care if I was was forty times over the uh, over the legal limit. See, in other words, if the court doesn't have jurisdiction, you can't give it to them. They have to have it. The reason they can't get it because they're a code. They're they're a statute court. Statute courts are inferior to the supreme law of the land. We have to know that. Does that make sense to you? Yes, but as you're saying that, and you, they don't have jurisdiction, it makes me wonder okay. how all these courts even exist, or is it just our ignorance? And that Our just, ignorance. Our ignorance. Yeah. I got laid off about 35, 35 years ago. I got laid off from a job. I was unemployed. I got unemployment, but I was unemployed for about six or eight months. What I did is for six months, I went to every court in the area. I went to, to JP. I went to traffic. I went to uh, state court. I went to county court. I went to federal court. I went to bankruptcy court. And I noticed, and I took notes. That's just what I did. I took notes. Every court, bar none, does exactly the same thing at the exact same time during the court mm. procession. So I figured, huh, why are they all doing exactly the same thing? Something, there's something that bothered me. So I started looking it up. Then I found out what it was. Why mm. do they do the exact same thing exactly, no matter what court it is, at the same time? Because it works. No, because what they're doing is they're trying to make you think they have jurisdiction. They're making a jurisdictional statement in the court in front of you to see if you're going to stop it. If you don't, they're going to assume they have it, and then they're going to mow over you, and they're going to say, we need you $350. In the case of a traffic ticket, they run about 200 people an hour through there. Two hundred, And the average yeah. ticket is $300, $300. I want you to run the numbers, and they do it eight hours a day. They make $100,000 an hour eight hours a day, they make a million dollars a day, every day, five days a week, 365, well, except the days when they're closed. So that's what they're making. Now, what is the, so what's the court about? It's about justice. No, it's not. It's about money. So Just us. It, there you go. See? Now, I found out this, too. If a kid's riding his bicycle, and I take a stick and put it in its spokes, guess what happens to the bike? It stops. And that's what you do in court. They don't and like there it. There you go. I, there you go. I put a stick in their spokes. And the reason I put the stick in their spokes is I have a saying on every time I go in there. I have a saying that I use on every court, every time, verbatim, without fail. And it works 100% of the time because I, I've stumbled there. The same question that's asked every time, I stumble it every time. Now they got a problem because I expose what they're doing. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, d d does that make sense? Yes, yes. Okay, so, so because I understand that, what we have to understand is, I'm going to give you a law, I'm going to ask you a question. If somebody else has a question, please step up. Hit star six and come up. Now, I got a question. Can we get back to 3124? Absolutely. I want you to. I want you. Oh, that's okay. I want you to read that to me. Exemption from taxation. Okay. Now Talk stop right up. there. So, hold on. Exempt from taxation. Would you like to know what's exempt from taxation? Would you, Would that be interesting to you? I haven't read it yet. It might be. Well, no, okay, then if, if it's not interesting to you, we're not going to do it. We're going to skip it. We're, we're going to go somewhere else. If you're not, if you're not interested in what, uh, do you want to know what's exempt from taxation? I do. Sure. Okay. Let's read it so we can see what's exempt from taxation. Now, don't, this is not, we're not in a hurry. So I'm going to tell you to stop so you can tell me what it says. Start over at the very beginning and read the heading, and then we're going to start from there. Okay, so it's 31 U.S. Code 3124, exemption from taxation. Okay. Now. Stocks and obligations of the United States government are exempt from taxation by state. Stop. Or hold, on, hold on. You're going to. Hold on. Hold on. What's exempt from taxation? Stocks and obligations of the United States government. 
Ah, so stocks and obligations of the United States government are exempt from taxation. Now we need to know what, who, where is it exempt? Now pick up from there and read the next little section so I can stop you. Go ahead. They're exempt from? Taxation by a state or political subdivision of the state. Stop right there. Now, so the United States stocks and obligations of the United States government are exempt from taxation from a state or a political subdivision of a state. I live in Texas. I live in Tarrant County. So isn't, isn't Texas a state and a political subdivision of that state be a county? And if you live in a state or, or, a, or, and then, or a, um, a precinct or a township, so any state or political subdivision of a state cannot tax under any circumstance of, uh, stocks or obligations of the federal government. Is that what it says? Yes. Now let's finish what it says so we can tell you what it says so then we can look up what they're saying. Finish reading it now. The exemption applies to each form of taxation that would require the obligation, the interest on the obligation, or both to be considered okay, stop in, right there. in the tax. Okay, to be considered in the tax. So the question is, what about property tax? If they're using stocks or obligations, property tax would be included, would it not? Yes. How about sales tax? Uh, probably not. Really? I think figure stocks out a way to get in stocks and obligations. Yes, it would. Okay. Yes, it would. So if stocks and obligations are cannot be taxed by a state or a political subdivision of a state, now what we need to do is let's find out what let's find out what a stock and an obligation is so we can see what's untaxable. Would you go to Title 18? That's crimes and criminal procedures. Title 18 is crimes and criminal procedures. So if you violate Title 18, it's a felony. Then go to Section 8. Title 18, Section 8. And then read just the heading and then stop so we can, so we can, so we can discuss it. So stocks and obligations of the United States government are exempt from any tax. If you're using the stock and the obligation in a state or a political subdivision of a state. So a state or a political subdivision of a state cannot use stocks and obligations to do anything with the tax. Now, have you found Title 18, Section 8? Yeah. Now, I want you to read just the heading and then stop for me. Uh, and it's uh, obligations or other security of the United States defined. Now we're, now we're going to define what it is. Now remember, this is Title 18. This is crimes and criminal procedures. This right here, if you violate Title 18, you go to prison. Now, if you would, read, read it. If you would, start reading it now. The term obligation or other security of the United States includes all bonds, certificates of indebtedness, National Bank Currency, Federal Reserve Notes, Federal Reserve Stop. Bank Notes. Hold on, hold on. Did you notice anything in there that was peculiar to you? Uh, so, Federal Reserve it. Notes, Federal Reserve Notes, according to this definition, are stocks and obligations of the United States government that cannot be taxed by a state or a political subdivision of a state in any form or fashion. Let's finish reading it. Go ahead. Um, okay, Federal Reserve notes, Federal Reserve bank notes, coupons, United States notes, Treasury notes, gold certificates, silver certificates, fractional, fractional notes, uh, certificates of deposit, bills, checks, or drafts for money drawn by or upon authorized officers of the United States, stamps, so, and other okay. representative the value of whatever denomination issued under any act of Congress and canceled United States stamps. Okay, so 
Federal Reserve notes, checks, cannot be used. So if you go to a grocery store and you buy a gallon of milk for $5, what is the $5, what $5 is that? What is it going to be, what is the um, denomination of the $5? What is it? Dollars of what? It's going to be a Federal Reserve note, is it not? Uh, I don't know, dollars of weight. I understand, but if, if, uh, if, if okay, how are Federal Reserve notes? If you don't even know this, then you, you're going to have a hard time getting grasped with what I'm fixing to tell you next. Five dollars is an in, is a is a is a is is a Federal Reserve note. Federal Reserve notes are not taxable. So if you go down to Home Depot and buy a thirteen dollar piece of plywood for twenty five dollars. And they, you give them $25 in Federal Reserve notes, credit card, or write a check. The indication is it's a, it's a Federal Reserve note. They cannot charge you a tax on that $25. They can't. If they do, it's a felony. So you get a property tax bill in the mail. It says your land value is 100000 The improvements is 100000 You owe You owe taxes for 200000 and it's 10%. It's $20,000 that you owe. What is every one of them denominations figured in? <laughs> Federal Reserve note. Okay, that's impossible. And the reason that's impossible because that would be a felony. So what I've done is I put together a process that what it does is when you get your when you get your property tax, you fill out a document and send it to them, telling them you're ready, willing, and able to pay. But I need you to tell me how to pay it. Now, when I send it in, what are the odds of them telling me to pay it in Federal Reserve notes? What are the odds? What percentage of the time do they tell you that? <coughs> well, they've never done it so far. Okay, so if they've never done it so far, that means. They don't want to reserve notes because if I offer to make a pay and they don't take my offer, what does that mean? Well, it's, uh, the, the, the debt is paid. There you go. That's how I do it right there. Yeah, well, I've tried that before, and it's still filled the house. Okay. So. Let me, <laughs> okay, let me tell you, okay, but let me tell you why. When you first get your when you first get your statement. You have 30 days to do what I'm telling you to do. If you do it in that first 30 days, there's no dollar signs on your statement. There's not any because they can't ask for it. They'll put right on the right on the statement, don't pay this. It's not a bill. We put it, we throw it in the drawer. In 30 days, because of the UCC, in 30 days you agree to pay it. So what I do, when I get it on Monday, Monday evening, I put my stuff in the mail and mail it out immediately. I give them 10 days to answer it or it's paid in full. Now, we have several houses that we've done that to and they have not paid property taxes in over 10 years. Yeah, well, I'd like to get a hold of that package because... Uh... <laughs> I, I understand, uh -huh. but you got to understand, so you got to understand something, okay? If you cut your finger... And you go to the hospital, and they sew it up, it probably won't get infected. You cut your finger, and you wait 60 days, and you work outside in the oil field in the oil patch, it's going to get infected. Guess what? They, you could lose that finger because of infection. So what happens is when you get that statement, you throw it in the drawer, you are now on a time. What's going to happen is that house is going to get infected, and they're going to have to cut it off. You didn't react. See, everything that they do to us, I told you, the statutes are so wonderful because they got to give you a remedy. Here's your remedy. But you only have 30 days to, to, to activate the remedy. So my question is, if you have to pee and you don't go, you go within a few hours, you're fine. What happens if you hold it in for 30 days? Yeah. Okay, well, it's already been 30 days, so uh, I'm going to say that I've got a whole year to prepare for next year. Where can I, where can I find and listen to this or, or, or whatever? Email Ed, email Ed 
with your number, and I'll send you the documents or Ed will send them to you. But the problem we're having, see, is we wait too long. Now, everything under the UCC, under our own law, under everything, is timed. So what happens is you give them time. Then what I do is I give them 15 days. I do a fault with the right to cure. I give them 10 days. I'm still under my 30 days. Then I go and I do a default. I file the default in the county. They stamp it. I put it in the court. In my letter, I tell them, if you don't answer me, you agree that when I default you, the default is payment in full. Then I take the default and I send it to them with a cover letter saying, thank you for getting back to me. Here's your payment in full. Now when I go to court, I've done everything that I could do. I can't make you do it. Now listen to my story. I want you to listen to it, and I want you to answer me. All right? I have a 9 millimeter and I have a 45. What do you want me to shoot you with? Uh, well, uh, neither. neither, please. See how simple that is? What do you want me to shoot you with? I want you to shoot me with a squirt gun from seven blocks away. I want you to shoot me with a Nerf gun. I want you to shoot me with a pretend gun. I want you to shoot me with nothing. See? See? This is what they're doing to us. I got a forty five and I got a 9 millimeter. What do you want to shoot me with? Well, geez, are you a good shot? Um, can I think about it for four or five days? See? I didn't say I was going to shoot you with those two. I just told you what I have. Yeah, is, is this uh, Rep Texas 777 uh, good for contacting you, Ed? Because I, I tried to write you earlier and I didn't get a response. Ed, he's asking you a question. He's asking me a question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, was, I was trying to make sure my emails were getting to you. Uh, is this rep seven 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 a good one or not? Rep rep TX seven seven seven. Yeah. Okay. At att dot net. Yeah. All right. I'll I'll uh, I'll oh, you write you. Do you see? Do you see where I'm coming from? And guess oh, yeah. what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, I was, I was trying to, uh, I was trying to do that this year, but I, you know, I couldn't find the the audio wasn't posted, or if it was posted, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find the the name that. Uh, well, what is your name, Eddie? Still on there? What's the name that it posted under on YouTube or, or BitChute or wherever you post them? My Ed Brennan. <laughs> It's an, it, the channel is called Ed Branham. It's called. Yeah, do, you, do, you get my, do you get my notices of the call, like the call tonight? Yeah, yeah. Well, my email is on there. Well, I know that, but when I tried to uh, write you earlier in the month, I didn't get any answer. Oh, really? Yeah. And that's been okay. lately, right? Okay, well, yeah. send, one, send one right now. <laughs> now, All let right. me explain something. Let me explain something to you, okay? You know what's coming next year. Prepare now yeah. for next year. Then when next year gets here, you can fix it. See, I can't make them do what's right. <clears throat> I can only hold. I can only hold their feet to the fire. Yeah. Can I make a comment? Mm-hmm. Um, back to of the, what you were talking to the gentleman before about yes. and uh, how they trick you. Yes. And everything is a trick. Um, I recently had some court dates, and um, Oh, the court has been biased in helping the other side in a colluded effort to asset strip me. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> they pulled the railroad on me and 
caught me off guard and shocked me. And I didn't do what I was supposed to in court. So then I filed some papers. <coughs> and I basically killed the case. But they started trying to catch me at the last second so I would be off guard for court. And so they called me on a Wednesday and said, you have court on Friday. And I said, well, I haven't got proper notice. And uh, they said, well, you know, you have court anyway on Friday. And I said, well, that's not proper notice. And so when Friday came, I didn't show up. And the court was calling and calling and calling that morning. <laughs> An yep. hour after court started, they were still calling me. And me and my friend were laughing. Like, boy, they're desperate to get me up in there. And so then after the court time was over, I called and said, you know, y'all are going to have to reschedule that because you didn't give me proper notice. And they said, oh. Uh, well, we were trying to reach you because we had an emergency and we had to move the court date. <laughs> and you have to come into court Monday. And I said, well, that's not proper notice. And they said, well, we're going to have court whether you decide to be there or not. And I said, well, when I get proper notice, I'll be there. Monday rolled around. And guess what? They spontaneously had another emergency. <laughs> so the paper that the guy was filing against me has to be filed. They have to give you, um, I think, like 14 days notice. And so guess when my next court date was? <laughs> it was more than 14 days out exactly yeah. so they will lie to you they will trick you uh, but make sure you document everything and if you can record it all the better every time I speak with them I record it and um, that way they can't pull those kind of tricks on me and so now they're starting to see it isn't working. I think they're starting to panic a little bit because they weren't answering my calls before and they wouldn't schedule me any court dates. Yet him, they would schedule him an emergency court date. Uh, but they would ignore my instant or motion. Now they're answering their phone for me and they're scheduling me court dates. And this will happen when you listen to Carrie a whole lot and know how to deal with them and when you know the law and you stick to your guns and they know you're documenting them then they start to straighten up a little bit but yes they do try to trick you at every single turn and I'm pretty sure if I would have showed up at either one of those court dates they would have tried to railroad me again that's it for my right. comment Thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. But you got to understand something. The guy that's talking to me about his tax, his property taxes, are you still with me? Okay. Yeah, I just have to unmute. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions here, and I'm going to have you look them up so you can understand what we're up against. I had, you, had him read Title I, Section 1 on purpose. Now, uh, you need to, our government is a forms government. They love forms, okay? Do, okay, I want you to fill out a form for me and I, so I can help you. Do you know what a form is? Because we need to know what it is so that we know if, if you fill it out or not. If I send you the wrong form, how would you know it if you don't know what one is? So do you know what a form is? Uh, no. What is a form? Okay, so so you got to fill out a form in order for you to in order for you to in order for you to have your property taxes stopped. You have to fill out a form because I'm going to give you a form. You're going to fill it out. You don't even know what a form is. Well, then how am I going to help you? How do how do I help you if you don't even know what a form is? I may have already filled out the form. What is the okay, form? So you what, which which okay. form are you talking okay. about? Okay, let's look up the word form. Okay, are you in front of your computer? 
can be. Okay, I need you to be. Okay, Ed, there's, okay. Uh, I need you to be so I can show you what they're doing to us. We have to know what their strategy is. So once we learn what their strategy is, we can now go there with confidence and we can take the corruption out of the judge's hands. What we're doing is we're complaining. Those judges are corrupt. I'm not even going to go because they're just going to rule against me. Well, the reason they're ruling against us is because you're supposed to do something and you don't even know what it is. See what I'm saying? Now, if you get in front of your computer, let me know. Why you I'm do, here. I'm going to show you. Okay, I want... Okay, I want you to put in your search engine definition, form, forms definition, Black's Law Dictionary. When it pops up, I want you to read it to me, and I'm going to stop you along the way so you can see what a form is. We need to know what it is so that we know how to do a countermeasure. Now, we're at war, okay? Now, when you're at war, um, you, you don't get on the radio and say, hey, General, we're going to have all of our best troops, all of our elite uh, green Berets go across the bridge at 10 o'clock in the morning and we're going to have all of our heavy <coughs> equipment, all of our bullets and all of our guns at 10 o'clock in the morning go across the bridge. Why wouldn't you do that? Because the enemy would then at 10 o'clock blow the bridge up. You'd lose all your best soldiers, all your men. Now you're going to lose the war. We have to know. We have to go in there and that's what they're doing to us. So when form pops up, let me know that you got you want the form definition Black's Law Dictionary. See, this is jurisdiction at its finest. Has it popped up? Carrie, okay, we're we're past time. <laughs> okay, um, can we just we'll just do this and then we'll get off. That's okay. <laughs> All right. Did you find it? Uh, no, my computer is jammed up. It's not doing anything. Okay. Okay. What's this? What's well, the thing? I'll look it up. Form F O R M definition. I'm at a Black computer. Law. You want me to back and look it up? It's a model or skeleton of an instrument okay, to be used on. in the judicial proceedings. Hold on. Hold on. You're, hold on. You're going too fast. It's not a hurry. Okay, I want you to read it because we're going to stop you along the way so we can discuss it. Go ahead. You're ready. A model. A model or skeleton of an instrument to be used stop. in the judicial. Okay. Proceeding. Now, hold, hold, right there. So tell me what a form is. A skeleton or a model. No. An instrument. What is it's it? It's an instrument, ah, like a viola. There you go. All right. See, there's that red herring. It's a model or a skeleton of an instrument. So a form is an instrument to be used in a court of law. Now finish that up. Containing the principal necessary matters the proper technical terms or phrases, and whatever else is necessary to make it formally correct and arranged in proper and methodological order. Methodical order. Yeah. And okay. capable of being adapted to the circumstances of the specifics. Now... What happens is when you get a ticket alongside the road, that's not a ticket, that's a form. So it's a model or a skeleton of an instrument to be used in a court of law. It's got all the technical terms on it. See, there's our definitions. There's our, there's our Title I, Section 1. Does that make sense? So it's a, it's a model or a skeleton of an instrument. Now, I'm going to show you how dastardly they are. The lady that came <laughs> on here, I know you, would you look up... Um, uh, instrument in Black's Law Dictionary and read it and then I'm going to show you what an instrument is and so a form is not a form a form is an instrument you didn't know that that's your fault you're in a war that you don't know what the you don't know your enemy if you don't know your enemy you can't win the war so you're throwing your own self under the bus you're walking in court and you're throwing yourself under the bus and you're saying judge you're corrupt he's not he is corrupt but you're letting him be corrupt I take all the corruption away from them because this is how I react on everything. I have a glossary page. Here's their glossary page. A form. It's an instrument. Would you read the instrument for me, please? A written document, a formal or legal document in writing, such as a contract, deed, will, 
bond or lease. Now, a, so a form is a will. So what you're doing is when you get a speeding ticket, they're going to put it on a form. They're going to put it on an instrument. That's your will. You sign your will to them. They're going to say, well, your will, you're going to give us from your will $500 for speeding today. So the speeding is not a ticket. It's a will. It's a contract. It's a, it's a, it's a bond. So what we're doing is we're bonding our own selves because we don't know it. So in your property tax, I have a form that I've made. I do a model or a skeleton of an instrument for them to give me what's mine. And that's how I do it right there. Does that make sense? Fantastic sense. Thank you so much. No, it's thank you for looking that up. But the problem we have is we don't know the enemy. See? Now, I'm going to leave you with this. I'm going to leave you with this. Um, I watched Johnny Carson. It's been probably 15, 16 years ago, and Rodney Dangerfield was on there. And Rodney Dangerfield made this comment. He said, yeah. He said, uh, I, met a, I met a real sweet girl last night. He says her name is Valerie Dubois. So he says, to, he says, so she told me to call her by her initials. I said, well, what are your initials? She said, VD. He looked at Johnny and said, now I wonder why I got it. That's what we're doing right there. We don't understand what they're doing. They're telling us up front, um, I'm going to get send to your house, Valerie Dubois. We're so excited, we can't hardly wait. When we go to court, guess what we have? That's right. Because we didn't know that a, we thought a form was just something we put, we filled out to give to them so they would know who we were. It's not. It's an instrument. An instrument is a will or a bond. You're bonding yourself. That's why they want you to sign it. So you're bonding yourself to give them whatever they want from you, and you're doing it up front. Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you not, not do that? There is a way out of that. We don't have time. We're, thank you for being here tonight. If you're interested, next time ask the question, and we'll get into that, and I'll show you how to get around. Even if you sign the bond, it doesn't matter. You can still go to court and, and collect on the bond. All right. Thank you for being okay. here. Uh, our next call will be the 25th. Thanks, Carrie and Abe. Hey, it's my, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thank everybody Thank for calling. Y'all have a Bye. good night.